Welcome back to my channel. We will be doing Jack the Ripper in a series. So please if you enjoy my channel hit that like and subscribe for me. I am new to this so I'm working on my voice sounding low and stopping in spots. Others well dressed, Edouz's body was found in a corner of Mitre Square in the city of London, three quarters of an hour after the discovery of the body of Elizabeth Stride. Her throat was severed from ear to ear and her abdomen ripped open by a long, deep and jagged wound before her intestines had been placed over her right shoulder, with a section of intestine being completely detached and placed between her body and left arm. The left kidney and the major part of Edouz's uterus had been removed, and her face had been disfigured, with her nose severed, her cheek slashed, and cuts measuring a quarter of an inch and a half an inch respectively vertically incised through each of her eyelids. A triangular incision, the apex of which pointed towards Edouz's eye, had also been carved upon each of her cheeks, and a section of the oracle and lobe of her right ear was later recovered from her clothing. The police surgeon who conducted the post-mortem upon Edouz's body stated his opinion these mutilations would have taken, at least five minutes, to complete that a local cigarette salesman named Joseph Lewenda had passed through the square with two friends shortly before the murder, and he described seeing a fair-haired man of shabby appearance with a woman who may have been Edouz. Lewenda's companions were unable to confirm his description. The murders of Stride and Edouz ultimately became known as the double event. A section of Edouz's bloodied apron was found at the entrance to a tenement in Golston Street, Whitechapel, at 2.55 a.m. A chalk inscription upon the wall directly above this piece of apron read, The Jews are the men that will not be blamed for nothing. This graffito became known as the Golston Street Graffito. The message appeared to imply that a Jew or Jews in general were responsible for the series of murders, but it is unclear whether the graffito was written by the murderer on dropping the section of apron, or was merely incidental and nothing to do with the case. Such graffiti were commonplace in Whitechapel. Police Commissioner Charles Warren feared that the graffito might spark anti-Semitic riots and ordered the writing washed away before dawn, the extensively mutilated and disemboweled body of Mary Jane Kelly was discovered lying on the bed in the single room where she lived at 13 Millers Court, off Dorset Street, Spitalfields, at 10.45 a.m. on Friday, November 9, 1888. Her face had been hacked beyond all recognition. With her throat severed down to the spine, and the abdomen almost emptied of its organs. Her uterus, kidneys, and one breast had been placed beneath her head, and other viscera from her body placed beside her foot, about the bed and sections of her abdomen and thighs upon a bedside table. The heart was missing from the crime scene, multiple ashes found within the fireplace at 13 Miller's Court suggested Kelly's murderer had burned several combustible items to illuminate the single room as he mutilated her body. A recent fire had been severe enough to melt the solder between a kettle and its spout, which had fallen into the grate of the fireplace. Each of the canonical five murders was perpetrated at night. On or close to a weekend, either at the end of a month or a week or so, after. The mutilations became increasingly severe as the series of murders proceeded, except for that of Stride, whose attacker may have been interrupted. Nichols was not missing any organs. Chapman's uterus and sections of her bladder and vagina were taken, Edouz had her uterus and left kidney removed and her face mutilated, and Kelly's body was extensively eviscerated, with her face gashed in all directions. And the tissue of her neck being severed to the bone, although the heart was the sole body organ missing from this crime scene, historically, the belief these five canonical murders were committed by the same perpetrator is derived from contemporaneous documents which link them together to the exclusion of others. In 1894, Sir Melville Macnaughton, Assistant Chief Constable of the Metropolitan Police Service and Head of the Criminal Investigation Department, CID, wrote a report that stated, the Whitechapel murderer had five victims, five victims only. Similarly, the canonical five victims were linked together in a letter written by police surgeon Thomas Bond to Robert Anderson, head of the London CID. 
On 10 November 1888, some researchers have posited that some of the murders were undoubtedly the work of a single killer, but an unknown larger number of killers acting independently were responsible for the other crimes. Authors Stuart P. Evans and Donald Rumbelow argue that the canonical five is a ripper myth, and that three cases, Nichols, Chapman, and Eddowes, can be definitely linked to the same perpetrator, but that less certainty exists as to whether Stride and Kelly were also murdered by the same individual. Conversely, others suppose that the six murders between Tabram and Kelly were the work of a single killer. Dr. Percy Clark, assistant to the examining pathologist George Bagster Phillips, linked only three of the murders and thought that the others were perpetrated by weak-minded individuals, induced to emulate the crime. McNaughton did not join the police force until the year after the murders, and his memorandum contains serious factual errors about possible suspects. Mary Jane Kelly is generally considered to be the Ripper's final victim, and it is assumed that the crimes ended because of the culprit's death, imprisonment, institutionalization, or emigration. The Whitechapel murders file details another four murders that occurred after the canonical five, those of Rose Milet, Alice Mackenzie, the Pynchon Street Torso, and Francis Coles. The strangled body of 26-year-old Rose Milet was found in Clark's Yard, High Street, Poplar on December 20, 1888. There was no sign of a struggle, and the police believed that she had either accidentally hanged herself with her collar while in a drunken stupor or committed suicide. However, faint markings left by a cord on one side of her neck suggested Milet had been strangled. At the inquest into Milet's death, the jury returned a verdict of murder, Alice Mackenzie was murdered shortly after midnight on July 17, 1889 in Castle Alley, Whitechapel. She had suffered two stab wounds to her neck, and her left carotid artery had been severed. Several minor bruises and cuts were found on her body, which also bore a seven-inch long superficial wound extending from her left breast to her navel. One of the examining pathologists, Thomas Bond, believed this to be a ripper murder, though his colleague George Baggs to Phillips, who had examined the bodies of three previous victims, disagreed. Opinions among writers are also divided between those who suspect Mackenzie's murderer copied the modus operandi of Jack the Ripper to deflect suspicion from himself, and those who ascribe this murder to Jack the Ripper. The Pynchon Street torso was a decomposing headless and legless torso of an unidentified woman aged between 30 and 40 discovered beneath a railway arch in Pynchon Street, Whitechapel, on September 10, 1889. Bruising about the victim's back, hip, and arm indicated the decedent had been extensively beaten shortly before her death. The victim's abdomen was also extensively mutilated, although her genitals had been wounded. She appeared to have been killed approximately one day prior to the discovery of her torso. The dismembered sections of the body are believed to have been transported to the railway arch, hidden under an old chemise, at 2.15 a.m. on February 13, 1891, P.C. Ernest Thompson discovered a 25-year-old prostitute named Frances Coles lying beneath a railway arch at Swallow Gardens, Whitechapel. Her throat had been deeply cut, but her body was not mutilated, leading some to believe Thompson had disturbed her assailant. Coles was still alive, although she died before medical help could arrive. A 53-year-old stoker, James Thomas Sadler, had earlier been seen drinking with Coles, and the two are known to have argued approximately three hours before her death. Sadler was arrested by the police and charged with her murder. He was briefly thought to be the Ripper, but was later discharged from court for lack of evidence on March 3, 1891.